Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing! What? 12,000? Really? Well, that's cool. Ah, thanks for noticing you guys. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you all. <laughs> it does. It feels like it's it's so long now. <laughs> But, I, you know, if you're in the guild, you know that I'm not sitting around doing nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty cool. That's a nice milestone. That really crept up on me. I hadn't looked at that in a while. Cool. All right. Is everything look and sound okay? Is anyone else making an ironing board cover? Does yours look as bad as mine? Look at this. Is, this is how it used to look. And now look at it. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, using my old cover, obviously. Um, I looked at a few free patterns. I didn't see any paid ones out there. So I've linked them in the description. I haven't tried any of them. And the only reason I'm not doing it is because I felt like this was just as much work taking the, apart this one and I knew it fit. Um, and so I didn't really want to get like part way down the road and have to fit my ironing board. Like I fit enough stuff, right? So anyway, I, I have like, there's a lot of you here. Hey, Delwyn, Fiona, Nancy, Aisha. Not Aisha, Aisha. Emily, Sarah, Carrie, Ray, Hannah, Danny, Amy, Michelle. Oh, it's really nice to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, and join the guild. It's it's really awesome. I know you're probably like, I'm not actually bugging you that much about it. Oh, switch to live chat. Thank you, thank you. I now watch the stream in the control room too, so it does it does make a difference. Hey, Vestigia, how's it going? I know the orange was kind of cute. It, I mean, it wasn't my first choice, but I actually love this look. You know. Um, and then now it looks like this. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. I iron just about every day though at home. This is my home ironing board. I don't use the one at work. It's um, behind my uh, machine over there. So I brought it out. It's just like tucked in a corner usually here because I usually use a wool mat. So I brought it out today because um, I think this one will fit. So I thought it'd be fun to try it on once I'm done. So I'm using this ice cream print cotton. And then I realized last uh, yesterday, like how hilarious is that I'll be melting, like I'm ironing ice cream. I bought all this from Hearts and I didn't really have a plan. I just thought it was really cute. And I don't know why, but I bought a lot. <laughs> so I might make two ironing board covers with it. That way I have one on standby, you know, and I'm already in the, in the, in the 
whatever you call it. What do you call it? I'm already doing it. Um, and then I'm gonna use wool felt underneath. I'm gonna re re uh, reuse this batting layer because why not? Otherwise I'm throwing it away. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw it on there. And then I'm gonna put two layers of this wool felt, but I'm not gonna sew them in. I'm just gonna lay them in. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want a little extra padding. This is, this is definitely like kind of smushed now, you know? It's not like floofy. So I would like a little bit more umph to the ironing board. I do like that kind of a little bit softer surface. And I really enjoy my wool mat here at the office and I love how it holds the heat um, and the steam. So I think that'll be good. Whereas when it's on the metal ironing board, it just goes right through the bottom of the ironing board. So, hey Margaret, hey Sydney, how's it going? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a bit, Sydney. You've been busy, huh? All right, so this is this is what I did when I took mine apart. So the first thing I did was I, around the perimeter of my cover, it was surged and stitched, overlocked and stitched. I took my rotary knife and I just cut off the overlock. That's all I did. So then that got this off. I think I did the, um, there was a seam and then the overlock was next to it. I used my seam ripper for the seam and then I just cut off the overlock. Cause I just know like, okay, if I cut that off, I can add that back a seam allowance, right? Um, and um, the sewing on this, and I'm not exaggerating, it's maybe four stitches per inch. One, two, three, four, five. It's, yeah, four stitches. I don't know if you can, you see how big the stitches are? Look at that. I don't know if you can see it on this white binding, but they're gigantic. The stitches are a quarter inch each. <laughs> so um, it's really easy to take apart. Yours probably is too, if you're wanting to get rid of it, so. Oh, that's smart, Nancy. You wash your ironing board covers. Wow, now I really feel like a failure. <laughs> um, all right, so I took off this perimeter and I didn't finish taking it apart because I just wanted to make a few notes. All right, so this is kind of still intact. So before you get completely done ripping apart, make sure you mark on it where certain things go. So what I've done is I marked, you can see this little black, it doesn't matter, it's trash, right? So just use your Sharpie, mark on there. And what that is, is like this is the nose of the perimeter. And so this little seam right here, I marked where that went right there. So there, mine has a nose with these sides. So I also put one notch where these sides connect. And then at the back end, it's looking a little messy, I know. At the back end, I have the same thing. I have another little end piece and I put a double notch where these two go together, these seams. And then um, I put a double notch right here for the back, so I know that that's at the back, um, and that will help. The other thing I've done is I marked where the Velcro goes. I just wrote a V and kind of made a little mark right there. So, <clears throat> oh, right, you're starching. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh, nice, Sydney. Inside out triple cover stitch. <laughs> oh, so like you did uh, like a fake, like a flake, fake flat stitch. That I really actually like that because you don't have to be as accurate with those, you know, twin needles um, on the right side. And it flattens everything out. It's not a real flat lock. And I know that, but it is kind of nice. I, if that's what you're talking about, I really like that too. So, all right, so I'm gonna just you reuse this Velcro, right? Because why not? Um, and so we'll just set these aside. Try not to cut anything. I'm gonna actually try and use this binding. I know that seems a little ambitious. I don't mind using some binding. I have tons of it, right? <laughs> um, but, this little binding casing is nylon, so it's kind of slippery. I actually don't even think I really need the binding when putting it on my ironing board, so. 
Let's just take off these little Velcros. Once I take these off, we're pretty much almost ready to cut it out. So if you are not going to, like if you don't have something like this, I can tell you the measurements of mine, but what I would do is, you know, have a shorter piece of the hook and then a longer piece of the loop to stretch across your ironing board. See, this goes all the way across. And then um, you could tether it down if it's kind of pulling up on the sides a little bit. That'll help a little bit. Yeah, the fake, yeah. <laughs> uh, is that not what we call it? I mean, it looks like a nose. You knew what I meant when I said that. The nose. I wonder if there, there probably is a real term for that. It's probably neck. I'll bet it's neck, not nose. I don't know why. I just, you know, I feel like because you often are ironing the necks and collars of things around the nose of the ironing board. <laughs> um, but uh, who knows? There's probably not. I'm being really careful because this fabric is obviously very brittle right now. Even though this stuff looks nicer, it's still pretty brittle. All right, so let's set that, that aside. So let's pull off these pattern pieces now. I've pretty much done most of the work. So at this end down here, the, the like flat end of the ironing board, I have two gigantic pleats. So I'm gonna admit, some of my sewing failures, ironically, have been ironing board covers. And um, I, my, in my defense, I don't really have a great excuse, except that I rushed it. I, I just thought, oh, this is easy. I'm gonna knock this out. This sounds kind of fun. It, you know, it's a great way to procrastinate whatever else you're working on, right? And then uh, I ended up making things that I was like, okay, I should have thought this through a little bit more because they were too thick to go around the ironing board, like the ironing board itself, or they were kind of boardy. They didn't fit very good. I've had successes too, like the one over there is perfect. It's great, um, and I think I put more thought into, into it. All right, so this one right here has these two gigantic pleats. The reason I'm telling you that story is because I feel like this is a really good solution if you're needing some adjustability. They made this piece and it's just like, they probably cut this piece and then this goes to lots of different sized ironing boards. And so they have a pattern, the people who make these, they have probably have one pattern for this and then they use this piece for lots of different ones. And then they adjust it as they're sewing it to the board with this pleat. I've seen that before. So um, I'm gonna leave that pleat in there. We're gonna iron this and mark it as a pattern piece. Look at that funky thing. I tried to keep the integrity of all my pieces so I could just iron them and use them. I don't know any terms. <laughs> I don't know any terms about ironing boards, but uh, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> all right, so I can just pull this off because look, I did my double notch, it goes to there. Um, I know that the V pointing there is the side that gets bound. I'm, I'm, I'm a little like, just don't want to lose track of what goes to where. Cause I think it'd be really easy to go, oh wait, is this the, the side with the draw cord or the side that goes to the board cover? So you don't really need this to stay nice anymore. So just draw on it, board and cord. <laughs> so we just need one of those, but we need to take them both off because we're gonna reuse, I'm gonna reuse this binding thing, which is just a single, it's like a, oh, it is, oh, it is double fold. Oh, my bad. It's really easy though, because it's four stitches per inch. All right, this is where the back stitch is. This has come in handy on some boards I've had, this little adjustment. This one I don't re feel like it's, it was that essential. And I think it's because I bought the ironing board and the cover from the same place. I'm pretty sure Target. God, did I really buy my ironing board from Target? I don't think I bought the ironing board from Target, but maybe I did. 
I know I got this cover from there. All right. All right, there's our, our nose. And we just have this little piece here. We've gotten so far. Let's hope I don't rip this one. <laughs> so how have you guys been? What have you guys been up to? I've been busy making my this month's skill building session for the, well, for the guild and for on my website. Um, and it's gonna be about pockets. I announced it, I think yesterday. I thought, oh, I'm gonna give everybody kind of a fun one. And this one won't be quite as much time I have to spend because I spent way more time on the sleeve one than I, than I wanna spend on those every month. And I think I am up to, I'm recording more than 30 videos for it. And it's because I, I sew, I record one for the pattern and one for the sewing. And there's like a whole packet that comes with these skill building sessions. You don't technically need the videos if you aren't wanting to watch videos. All the information though isn't in the videos, it's in the packet. And then the video just shows, okay, there's a visual on how to sew this. And then this is a visual on how to do the pattern work. Like for the sleeve one, you don't, you, the videos are gonna be helpful, but I wanted it to be a lot text because sometimes it's just nice to see it written down, you know, and you don't want all of your instruction. You don't have to take, you wanna have to take notes. You know what I mean? All right, let's go to the searcher. I mean, to the iron. Hi, Libby. Are you home yet? You're outside patterning a boat seat cover for work. <laughs> Okay, let's pull all these pattern pieces here. Let's see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stand on this side. I'm not used to adjusting this from here though, and I can't quite see the chat. the irony, right, of ironing my pattern pieces to make my ironing board cover. So I have to remember that I cut off that seam allowance. So if I wanna add it back, I'm gonna have to do that. I'm trying to figure out, is this piece actually straight? I think it might be. I think it's only shaped on the ends. It's probably a little bit warped from being on my ironing board. This is the problem when people do like custom sewing for people or they copy garments. I'll bet one of their number one complaints among many is that um, the garment is warped. So like say someone says, oh, I really want you to copy my pair of jeans. These are my favorite pair of jeans. I've had them for 15 years. And the sewist is like, okay, you know. But then what they find is that the jeans have stretched in areas to fit the body really nicely, you know. And you can't actually, <laughs> you can't really mimic that in a pattern. I don't think I need this one. We just need this one. Yeah, this is the one I wrote board and cord, okay. I mean, two of those. So now this one, I have a pleat. And let's get a Sharpie. Feels like spring. A live chat place in the guild. What do you mean, Nancy? <laughs> I mean, you can chat in there. You just mean like a chat room. I mean, I guess. Oh, Ray, Ray nailed it, chat room. Yeah, don't break your arm, Nancy, come on. <laughs> Doing for the team here. <laughs> no breakages of armages. Okay, so I'm gonna mark this whole plate. 
really you just need these two spots here. We'll mark this side too. I guess you, we could just uh, have a post that is just a live chat. Right? How, how would that be different? I, I feel like it is, you know? I really need to start like kind of talking a little bit about the guild. I'm not hardcore advertising it because I know you guys are going to be like, no, don't make it huge. Um, but the thing is, I think it's not, a, it's not going to affect things really that much because there are a lot of people in there and you're not all on there at the same moment, you know, but just trying to describe what, sorry. <laughs> I saw the P in project thumbnail and I clicked it. I meant pattern table. You know, I think like, um, uh, I don't know, trying to describe what the, the guild is. Like it's actually a true community. It's not a forum. It's not a post with a bunch of text under it. It's like, it's like a social app, but without ads, you know? So like a video chat area. Right? Yeah, Carrie. I wonder. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we remember you breaking your arm. I'm going to iron this too. I can feel. Of course we remember that. I'm just glad Carrie remembered to uh, bring it up. <laughs> I'm ironing my ironing board. <laughs> This feels so weird. <laughs> Let's get this nice and flat. Like this is a good example. Did you see how that was kind of like bending around? I mean, it was obviously originally a flat piece of fabric, but it's gotten stretched out right there. And you know that the butts and knees of pants do that. So to copy those patterns, you can copy it and do your best and it'll probably be identical, but it won't fit the same. And people are always disappointed when that happens because I've been there when that happens. I've worked places where they did that. And it's hard to describe. Well, your butt hasn't broken these in yet. <laughs> it's a you problem. <laughs> I'm just teasing. All right. Okay. I have this big wrinkle right here. So this must be where a little bit of slack was on my ironing board and it just got, got kind of, you know, grandfathered in. All right, let's cut our pieces. Pattern table. Like, yeah, it's like social media. But I think when you say that, every, we all kind of cringe <laughs> when we hear that. But at the same time, it's like, oh, this is how it could be. And, you know, I was talking to someone in one of the Zooms yesterday. And um, it's, and I, a lot of people have mentioned this. I think the, the nice thing is, like someone put it really well. They were like, you know, this is so great. When I go to my social media, a lot of my friends and family follow me. They don't, they don't sew. They're really supportive of what I'm doing, but they're not like, they don't want to like talk sewing. And in there you can talk sewing, you know? Anyway. All right. So let's check out how, how symmetrical this is or how, oh, what did I just do? Oh my gosh. I bounced. I touched my mouse. You know, Michelle, I might, but I might do that off camera. Are you, if you're wanting me to, I can, but I, I'm just going to use these pieces, I think, because, um, you know, they're here, basically. I'll definitely save these. Libby, what did you say the other day that you did? You ironed something to paper. What was that? What 
What about the chocolate? Oh my gosh, you know, when we went to Belgium, my friend and I, we, uh, you know, pretty much everywhere spoke English, of course, which was very nice, but the chocolate shops didn't. A lot of them didn't speak English uh, as they're, and they, they spoke Flemish. And so it was kind of, it was always really fun to go in there, but it was always definitely like, we had no, like, even if you spoke a little bit or you're learning a language, you're typically not going to learn like terms for whatever it is you're engaging in if it's specific, right? You're just learning how to ask where the bathroom is or where's the bus stop, you know? And so asking which ones are, you know, lemon cream or um, coffee meringue or whatever, you don't really have that subtlety anyway. And so we would just get like a mixed box every night and make notes. And every day we would get one box and we would do research at night. And then we did all, we, we decided what we wanted when we went th to buy all of the chocolate for everybody in our lives. I think I spent $240 on chocolate and that was almost 20 years ago. Oh my God, it's crazy. But I got chocolates I liked. I'm not a big filled chocolate person. Oh yeah, Michelle, yeah, I think, yeah. I'm gonna probably fold this up, but I was just thinking like Libby mentioned the other day, fusible lightweight Pellon. Yeah, so the, I thought that was genius. So she ironed her pattern pieces to iron-on interfacing. So this is the same, Allison. This is actually the top of my ironing board, pretty much. The seam goes right around the perimeter. <laughs> right? Yeah, we were in Ghent. Uh, you know, like it's the, the um, I learned a lot about chocolate as far as like where it's not from there, um, but Belgium invented the filled chocolate. So, you know, like when you go to C's candy and you get a filled chocolate, Belgium, that they invented the filled chocolate. So that's not my favorite kind, but um, you know, when in Belgium. <laughs> Dang, no mods in chat yet. I gotta do my own modding here. Um, wait, how do I get rid of you? Hide user. Okay, pockets. Control alert. <laughs> okay, so I have my pattern pieces here. So I have a notch right here at the center, which I don't think I have one here, but that would be really helpful. So let's just fold this in half and see where our center marks are. And I'm also kind of curious how good my notches were. Like see right here, I did a notch. So they're only about a half inch apart. That's not too bad for something that's been used a lot. So I'm going to, I just cut across the center there. So I have a little V notch right there. You can see that. Be gone, Alfred. <laughs> Away with you. Out, out, darn Alfred. <laughs> yes, Aisha, yes, yes. That's exactly how it felt. Like some of them were, uh, indulgent of our ignorance, but most were not. They were, they were friendly enough, but they were, and the thing was, the chocolate shops there in Ghent, they were on every corner. Um, we were in this like old downtown area, cobblestones, all of it, and um, beautiful. It was beautiful and kind of, it was winter. It was just very, the mood was amazing. <laughs> and um, the, uh, there were so many chocolate shops, it was definitely geared, I felt like, towards tourists. And someone explained to me who lived there, I can't remember, she was Czech. Her husband was, I think, Spanish, or was he American? And they moved around a lot. And so she was really friendly and helpful and everything. Um, and um, she explained, she said, well, a lot of the chocolate shops are, like family owned, they go back a long way. 
Um, and those people, they pretty much come in from the country and they run their shop during the day and people make their recipe for them like they don't make them anymore. And so it was like, it was like a weird world of the chocolate world that I started learning. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, I've been to Bruges. Bruges is adorable. Okay. So here I have my long piece. I need two of these. This is where my Velcro goes. I have my nose. Where's my bottom piece? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, and then I have my bottom piece, uh, which is oddly shaped. This one I I might kind of true up a little bit because it's a little bit funky. Maybe I'll just cut it on the fold. All right, let's do it. I'm going for it. This is what I do with ironing board covers. I get impatient. And then it doesn't work out that great. <laughs> That's awesome, Fiona. Yeah, this was a long time ago. My husband got a, a hip there before they were um, doing metal um, hip resurfacing here. They were, they were, the FDA hadn't approved them yet. And so our insurance wouldn't pay for it and they were only allowing 100 devices into the country a year. So because he was so young um, and hips, hip replacements traditionally are for, they only last about five to 15 years, I think. At the time, this was what the, this was what the medical stuff was. He was so young for that. So we opted for this new at the time thing called hip resurfacing. And so we had to pay for it ourselves and we had to travel to Belgium to do it because the doctor who developed it uh, is, was doing it in Belgium, um, Dr. Deschmet. And so that's what we did. And it changed my husband's life for the better. Um, and uh, yeah, he's had it for 20 years now. <laughs> he just, I think he's had it just has 19 year anniversary, something like that. And now they, it is an approved, um, it's an approved surgery in the United States and you can get your insurance, some insurance to pay for it, which is great. All right. I have my cover on here. I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add like, I think I'm going to add an eighth of an inch around the perimeter for seam allowance. That's about it. I'm, I'm making two. Yeah, Michelle, thank you. I have so much of this fabric, look. And so I have still have like three quarters of a yard. So I have enough to do two. And um, I do have a directional print. I don't want to cut my pattern piece. I just found this one under there. One, two, three pieces. All right. My really long one, yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll be fine. How long have we been married? Uh, we weren't married at the time, even though we had a, uh, my daughter. So I know that probably, if you're trying to do the math that way, we've been married for 15 and a half years, I think. Yeah, something like that. I got married in 2006. And Cricket was three at the time. And when we went to Belgium, she was 14 months old and allergic to gluten, highly. She's not now, but she was at the time. The lighting is, I don't have this light on because it kind of bugs me sometimes. Is it, how is the lighting for you guys? It just looks kind of dull, but look at this ironing board covers. So, yeah, I love seeing the whole thing on the screen. Uh, all right, I'm doing it. I'm just gonna cut about an eighth of an inch. So like I said, there's two free, or three, I think, free patterns or processes to make your own ironing board cover in the description if you don't want to use your old one or maybe you don't even have uh, your old one to use. 
maybe you just got a new ironing board and the cover that you're using, you're realizing isn't gonna last long. That's why I had to get a cover. Or it's white and everything freaking shows up on the white that your iron does. There are a few, there is, a, I think, I know one of those methods talks about like what measurements to take to get it to match your ironing, ironing board. Malin. <laughs> I'm having so much trouble pronouncing your name, Malin. It feels, I've been saying it wrong for years. She fi I finally now know. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to fold this in half. Actually, let's mark these notches here. Yeah, we'll, we'll fold it in half, actually. I didn't, I should have folded this in half to get it symmetrical. Whoops. Welcome, Susie. If you're watching and you're new and subscribing. Okay, so. I'm gonna mark the um, end here with a double notch. The top here with an angle notch. I'm gonna mark my notch where the nose goes. Nose goes. And I'm gonna mark where the other one goes. Which is right, where is it? It's down here. Oh, there it is, right there. Okay. Oh, I was gonna about to throw that away, but we're using this as a pattern piece. All right, Michelle, <laughs> I'm saving this. <laughs> This precious piece of fabric. <laughs> Thanks, Mullen. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so I got married in 2006. I've been married, uh, I hope that's 15. Oh, uh, there's already a quarter inch on here, Michelle. I'm just adding because what I did to um, take it apart was I... Um, rotary knifed the seam allowance off, only the surging seam allowance off. I can actually see my seam allowance on there. It's probably really hard for you to see it, but can you see this? See that little fold? That's my seam right there. So I just added an A so that I can overlock it if I want. That's all. So yeah, I've been married for 15 years. Um, we've been together for <laughs> 24 years. Is that right? Really? Yeah, I guess so. Did I meet him when I was 20? No, I moved to Humboldt when I was 26. I met him when I was 27. 23 years we've been together. And Cricket was like three at our wedding. Something like that. And she was 14 months old when we went to Belgium. <clears throat> All right, so let's cut out the rest of the pieces. This was a good use for this fabric. Like, I'm going to use it all up probably. Let's get it on the green. All right, so we have... So some of those uh, links also talk about making like pockets, like say you have goodies you always like to have at your iron, like as a sewist, you know, like some people have like their starch or maybe a seam gauge or rulers or pins. Um, uh, besides the things like your ham, your salami, <laughs> things like that for pressing, there are some other tools people like having handy. Um, there are some pockets you can make that hang down off your ironing board. This is my home ironing board. I don't use a traditional ironing board here at work. I use a wool mat. So I won't be making the pockets, but 
I think it's a really great thing to think about because it's kind of fun, you know, being able to do, you know, specific pockets for your ironing board. I'm going to open this up. <laughs> oh, yeah, Malin, that's so funny. I feel like at the time it was a little bit, you know, I'm not going to say scandalous, but it still wasn't that normal. Yeah, this doesn't quite go across the width of my fabric, this piece right here. So I could cut it into a couple of other pieces. I want to kind of see how straight do I think this... Yeah, I do think that this is supposed to be a straight piece, but do you see this little curve? That might be... This piece... I'm just leaning it. I'm laying it on my grid and just kind of assessing here. Do I think that this is a intentional curve or is it from the fabric being curved around my ironing board all this time? It won't hurt to cut the curve in there. Hmm. So what we could do is, let's see if this piece fits here. We have one of those. Can I fit one of these over here? No. This just seems kind of like I could go like this and I could go like this and get another one there. And then one, two. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Cutting it I kind of, I know I have plenty, but I'm cutting it kind of close. This is it right here. Um, no, it's, it does look pretty straight right there, except for like the pieces asymmetrical from my cutting it off and stuff. Cause this is how this piece goes like this. Just to give you guys a visual. And then this one would go actually goes like this. Oh no, you're right. It's the curve end that goes to the nose and then to the end here, back here, this one curves around a lot, goes like that. <laughs> That's awesome, Aisha. I sometimes, I meet a lot of people that, um, are really wanting to find their forever person and they're really young. And uh, I think like back on that time and I think about, I wasn't as bent on finding my forever person, I will admit. It was I was pretty happy being single. I just, I just like being on my own. I didn't date either, so I was just kind of on my own. And um, I always think about like, I didn't meet him till I was 27. And that's what I tell people because they're a lot younger than that, 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 that bring this up a lot. And I'm always like, well, I didn't meet my husband until I was 27. And I have plenty of friends who met their spouses or partners or whatever a lot later than that. <laughs> it goes by quick. All right. What to do here? I think I definitely got to piece it. Maybe I will make it a really small piece. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just make one of these bigger. You know? I'm just going to make one of these bigger. That's what I'll do. Okay, so we'll make it... <laughs> How do you like... <laughs> Okay, so this needs a seam allowance on this edge. This has seam allowance, so if I just tape it together like that, the seam allowance will be taken care of, but I'm going to overlap this at the seam here. 
and add it to the other pieces. And then I need it on this one over here too. Just make sure we keep this on the fold maybe or No, I don't usually tape fabric, just so y'all know. Okay, so now we have this piece and then just this one needs a little bit of seam allowance. <laughs> oh, Danny, that sounds just like me too. <laughs> we didn't plan on having any kids either. <laughs> That's okay, Carrie. I love seeing, oh, sorry. I love seeing people's uh, stories like that. Uh, but I also know for some people, you know, it's, it's not as, uh, you know, something that they really want to talk about at all. And I respect that. <laughs> oh, Emily, <laughs> That's pretty cute. Okay, so I need four of these technically to make two ironing board covers, right? So one, two, three, four. Can I do it? I don't know. I don't mind the ice creams being right side up or not right side up. So I can get this one here. Let's um, put this here for a second. Can I get one here? Not really. I need one of these right here. So it's really just this nose I'm having the trouble with. And I could probably spend an hour or less probably figuring out how to get it on there or I could just use a different fabric. <laughs> so. It is a post Valentine's chat, isn't it? Do you guys do anything sewing related for Valentine's Day? I know, um, who was that? Was that Demery? Hey, d -Mac, how's it going? I mean, Violet, how's it going? Oh, I have another, oh, Malin's here, but. Oh, she, oh, so quick, so quick. Thank you. Um, okay, I want that to go away. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Violet, that is, that is so something you would say. You are so smooth that way. Such a poet. Okay. I feel like all I'm doing is smoothing fabric for you guys right now. This piece is looking more and more like asymmetrical to me. I will admit. One and two. I'm just trying to get as much as possible. Yeah, I know Demery made a sweater vest for her partner. Unintentionally. <laughs> Heart shaped oven mitts? <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> nice, Michelle. <laughs> okay. 
I, I kind of, I feel like there's a gentle curve, you know, now that I'm trying to really get these two in here. Okay, so um, this is making my fabric upside down too, so I just wanted to make sure I had enough to do that. I have this one, and I want the ice creams to go like, okay, so this is the board edge. So I want it like this, just how I had it, okay. Like this. Can I get that in there? Probably. I just can't get this one right here in here. There. Maybe, no. All right, well, I'm kind of done fussing. I just want to cut one out and sew it. <laughs> you know, I'm done fussing. Let's just get one cut and sewing it. That's how I want it, right? This is the cord. I want my ice creams to be right side up like this. It's not gonna be like that for this nose, but that's okay. I'm good. I'm good, DMAC. Been working a lot and playing um, <clears throat> Assassin's Creed Valhalla again. I think just because I like the mindlessness of it. <laughs> You know? And then Rogue a little bit. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> Nancy, right? That vest did look good. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Michelle. You know, like, I don't really want to sweat it right now. And I think as long as I can get the sides in the print, that's all that really shows on the ironing board cover. The nose and the bottom get kind of curled under. All right, so we're going to do one here. And I got to remember this eighth inch seam allowance. Step down there. This one doesn't really need the eighth because it's the bound edge. It's kind of wiggling. All right. Flip. I'm saying that loudly, so don't forget to flip. So you have a left and a right. This is my cord edge. Yep. How's it going? All right, Nancy. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. I think that's a good plan. Yeah, it's like a navy blue. <laughs> you had to ask your husband. That's awesome. All right, so uh, I went like this, right? Right. Okay, so let's put our notches on here. Look at that piece, it's kind of wiggly. It's just an ironing board cover. <laughs> Don't sweat it. Is this how I had it? I think like this, right? Yeah. Okay, so this end We'll go to the nose. So we'll put one notch here. Um, we're gonna put a notch here for our Velcro 
and a notch here for our Velcro. And we're gonna put a double notch at this end to go to the back. We're gonna notch this guy here. Single notch. In my world, single always means front, double always means back. All right. And then we're gonna do one of this guy here. I can get two of those in there, huh? One, two, yeah. All right, this piece looks a little chunked up and that's because of those pleats. Yeah, I mean, I'm keeping it pretty on grain because of the ice creams, but this little band, yeah, you're right. It's really not gonna make a difference. Because it's uh, not even, my ice creams aren't even going to be right side up. The horror, an ice cream that's not right side up. This is the cord edge, no extra seam allowance here. Just on the seam. All right, we'll just trim this off. And now let's look at our notches for this guy. All right, I'm gonna do our double here. And then we need, I'm gonna put a double here for the center. And then I need my pleat. Pleat to pleat. <laughs> here and here. And I think that'll be obvious, but we'll just keep it with this piece here. All right, so now let's cut out some wool felt. Yep, just quilting cotton. Right, Emily, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna cut two layers of the wool I did a burn test, so if you if you have like, I had a ton of wool felt in my stash, but I was kind of suspicious that some of it was wool and I was right. And so I did a burn test. You want something that's definitely not going to melt. And a lot of felts now aren't wool anymore. Like the stuff at Joanne Fabrics is hit and miss, I think. Um, and a lot of wool felts, it's really sticky. A lot of wool felts, they put polyester in them. It's great for crafts and things, but um, there's a lot of reasons to have actual wool when you're using felt. If you're having a lot of trouble finding it, you really need it, go to the um, Waldorf Supply places. They have the most amazing <laughs> wool felt selections. My friend gave me a really amazing bundle of felts when I was doing my cupcake pin cushion and my pie slice pin cushion pattern. And uh, she was just looking for a home for it and she saw I was working on that pattern. So she was like, hey, take this. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and uh, those weren't wool felt, but they were fine for pin cushions, you know. Can I get two across? I did all that work to get it folded in half. No, I can't. Can I get two going this way? No. Pretty sure that is a big fat nope. Yeah, okay. All right. Fine. There's more than one way to fold fabric. Okay, Sydney. <laughs> yeah, we get kind of rowdy. <laughs> so the, re the way I determined if this was wool was I lit it on fire. <laughs> oh, that still isn't gonna work. What the heck? Fine. There's definitely enough here to get two. 
of these out, right? Right? So one of them melted and it didn't catch fire and this one caught fire. Uh, so then you know it's a natural fiber. If you don't want to use wool felt though, you can use um, pieces of batting. Um, old towels are actually one of the best things to use for heat protection and transfer. I did a lot of research when I did the oven mitt pattern about what to use on the inside. And so you can buy something called Insulbrite. And so you have to think about <laughs> the heat surfaces uh, two different ways. One, are you trying to protect yourself from heat? And then two, are you trying to capture heat? And so some of them will, it's fine to do either, right? If you're just trying to not hurt yourself or capture heat or, tr or transfer heat and it can, you can use it for that kind of surface, then you can use anything pretty much as long as it's heat resistant or heat proof. Um, but if you're trying to, um, I'm not actually explaining that very well. So if you start looking into what works for insulation to prevent yourself to old towels is one of the highest rated insulations against heat. And so using like an old towel as an oven mitt, while it's got a little bit sloppy and, and kind of like falling all over the place, it actually will protect you pretty good. And I've used those inside oven mitts before. Um, and sometimes we have those laying around so we can cut them up. Cutting up terry cloth toweling is a little bit messy. Someone mentioned yesterday they knew someone that used to use old linens, like the old table linens and things, and I think that's a great idea too. The linen's not very like thick and fluffy, but it's probably gonna hold the heat really well and it's going to be okay with it. So, um, Waldorf Supply. Oh, you can just Google any kind of, there's tons of Waldorf Supply places. <laughs> so, if you don't want to really buy batting or insel bright or something specific, I would look at your kind of your scrap cupboard and see if you have something you can cut up. That's why I'm using this wool felt because I was like, you know what, I have this and I want to use it. I want to get rid of it. It takes up a lot of space in my stash. I'm not really using it. And do you know how many pin cushions this would make? This is a piece I bought. So. Hey, Martina, how's it going? Nice to see you. I have two covers here. I forgot. All right. I'm going to use the old batting from the uh, cover. And I'm going to use this wool. Let's peel off one of these. Can I get one more? I should be able to look at all this wool felt. <laughs> I really want one more. Can I get one over here? You could just never assume what you're gonna have. It doesn't really have a grain line. I don't know why I'm being so, um, you know, loyal to the, to a, gr a grain line that actually doesn't exist on wool felt. Yeah, right, Allison, exactly. Like, you can uh, raid, the, raid the fabric stash for stuff. I'm just hoping that, I, I, I believe this is wool, bat, wool felt. Uh, like, when I bought it, I specifically purchased it. I bought it from a Waldorf, Waldorf place, I remember. And um, I still was nervous because, you know, Sometimes people don't really know what they're selling, you know? And it's been a few years. So I double checked it. 
This is just gonna lay on top too. I'm not going to sew it in. But I do kinda need to get rid of this wrinkle right here. All right, I think we're ready. <clears throat> Um, where's the one I just cut? Is it here? It's here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that's, that's smart, Sarah. Nice, Martina. I bet you're busy. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to cut, uh, fold up a little bit of this. That really cut down on the chunk, a big thing in my stash. All right, and then we have this piece of batting. I have this <laughs> cord. I have my Velcro. Um, I just threw my seam ripper on here. Let's go to the sewing machine. Oh, shoot. We're under the sewing machine now. All right. Let's hopefully I didn't do anything like end the stream. Oh, there's a pattern weight here. Wow. Jeez. I guess I haven't rotated that in a while. <laughs> I'm going to do a camera change real quick. Okay. Let's change a couple things here. It's a little bright, huh? Oh, I'm so glad to be at my sewing machine right now. Oh, I think I should turn that light on. I think we'll just be happier if I do. I was avoiding it. All right. So, and why can't I see that? Oh, okay, okay. So I've been sewing a lot of um, <clears throat> welt pockets. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this. Okay, I've been sewing a lot of welt pockets lately because of the, the new skill session that I'm coming out with. And um, so this is my process when I do these kinds of things. When I'm doing any kind of how-to, um, the skill sessions, whatever it is, I kind of get all the notes I have on things, if I have any. I get out any examples if I've sewn it. Um, I have it, if I have any pattern pieces that I've drafted, I get those out. And then I start like playing around with it and thinking about it, making notes, kind of compiling anything that pops into my head about it. Then I cut and sew a few, maybe I record something. Um, I write it all out, and then when it gets really close, I go and look on the internet for the same thing. I like to do a lot of it by myself because I like to see where I'm at in it. See like, because I'm not an expert in everything, um, but I'm, you know, I try. 
Uh, well, I, don't, I actually don't try to be an expert in everything. I just try to learn as much as I can. And certain things I'm like, oh, yeah, I know how to do that, but I've only done it like X number of times. It's not something I've done a ton. So I go and try it, right? And I've done a lot of well pockets, but I wouldn't consider myself an expert in them. And I have my own little methods, right? So this is kind of a long story. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, I'm pretty much pretty close on this pockets thing. It keeps getting bigger and bigger, like is my nature. Um, I want to re-record the entire 30 videos right now. And I'm trying to stop myself from doing that because, you know, that would just put it off. But I would probably feel better if I do it. You know what I mean? Because um, I just now I'm like, oh, now I have an idea of how I want this to look, right? All right. So yesterday I finally Googled. I wanted to know what would people find if they said how to sew a welt pocket, right? And then I started looking at a few people that I knew people would go to. And I realized that no one really is sewing a true welt pocket. They're all sewing the kind that you find like on the Auburn blazer or the Tamarack jacket, <clears throat> which isn't, it's called a welt pocket, but it's not, there's no welt. It's like a little cover that you hand sew at the end or you top stitch it down. <clears throat> so um, that's been really interesting to see like what we all think of now as a welt pocket. And so, um, ooh, that got really dark, huh? It's been, it, what, it, what's really great about it is that it makes me look at it sideways, forwards, and backwards. Because I know that if I were spending money on something, I would want to get something unique out of it. I would want it to change for the better whatever I'm doing or be in a format that made me want to try it. Like actually was like, oh, I want to try that. Now I feel like I can do this. You know, there's got to be something. I always look at things like what would I want if I were buying it? And so, and the welt pocket thing I had put together, I was like, yeah, it's okay, but I just feel like this isn't, this is how I've always done it. I haven't really like dove into this. Um, there's a few aspects to it. I've kind of like figured out my own little thing on, but there were a couple things that always bug me about welt pockets. And it's when you start really looking at all of them, there's, there's like three different styles, a single welt, a double welt, and then that kind of easy sew welt that everybody has a tutorial on. Um, even Threads Magazine, they kind of gatekeep theirs, so I couldn't look and see what they, and I didn't look too deeply. I wanted to see what people initially saw on the internet, and there's really not that much that's, and, and then I'd look at the comment section. People were like, oh, this changed my life. I'm like, but that wouldn't even work. Like some of it, it's like, they make it look like it works, but it's, they're glossing over so much of what is really happening there? You know what I mean? So, well, I mean, a real welt pocket, you know what a real welt pocket is, but um, I don't think I have anything here. Um, a real welt pocket, you know, has the like two, nar uh, two or one narrow little pieces that are sewn to the three sides. Three sides of it are sewn into the, the opening, right? Whereas like the one on the Tamarack jacket, I'm not knocking those. Those are great. I love sewing them that way. Those are really nice and easy. Um, they're really nice for really big openings like, um, like the Auburn and the Tamarack have. And what those are is you finish the ends of the welt, sew one long edge in, sew your pocket um, um, lining around the perimeter. So it's just a clean hole and then you turn it all inside and then you just lift up that little cover and then you you hand sew the ends down or top stitch them down. That's kind of like, I don't wanna say cheating, but cause I'm all about cheating. You, you guys know me, I'm totally fine with doing what works. But um, if, you, if you grew up sewing <laughs> in certain eras, you were expected to know how to set in those two narrow <laughs> lips of the welt to all four sides of that rectangle. And let me tell you, <laughs> like that wasn't easy. Is I know there's people in chat who know what I'm talking about. Like the kind of welt you were expected to understand how to sew or expected to learn how to sew to be a true tailor. <laughs> there was all this like emphasis on, on knowing how to sew a welt pocket. But 
I don't know. It's just, um, it's been a really interesting process and there's a couple things. I was, I kind of wasn't happy with where, I wanted it to be better. It was fine. It just wasn't, there wasn't anything new except for like a couple things. I don't know. I feel like I did really good yesterday though. I kind of got past one other thing and I figured out a trick that I, I'm sure it's not new, but anyway, that's my little rant about welt pockets and what you guys are finding on the internet. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> All right, let's assemble this mess of the band first because this is really where all the sewing is at <laughs> you guys are like okay stare me <laughs> i was just reminded of it because i was about to say i haven't sewn anything in a while but actually i've been sewing pockets <laughs> for the last week all right so let's put in our pleat we're just going to Where's my center? Here's my double notch in my center. Here's my pleat. And we're just going to flop it over like that and we're gonna sew it in the seam allowance. And we'll do this side too. When you have all these little moving parts and elements, doesn't this go like closer though to the... That's not how it looked, right? I want like this. Maybe it did. Okay. When it's uh, nice and clean and flat, it really uh, doesn't really look the same, does it? Okay. So I have my pleat in there. That's that. Shem. <laughs> no, I just went on a rant. You're lucky you just missed my rant. <laughs> I have an acceptable thread. All right, so this is the board. This is the board. I went on a rant about like, I, like my process. Not really about the process, but um, this goes like this, right? Single, single. Oh, is this my, isn't this, this is the double, okay. Goes to this one. Um, I, I usually like look and see, like when I'm almost done with when like a skill session or how-to video or whatever, I'm almost done with it, or sometimes when I am done with it, I then Google and see what you guys find on the internet if you were looking for something like how to do something and so I just finally yesterday googled how to sew a welt pocket I wanted to see what people found and then I looked at a couple of them and I tried one and I was like this isn't gonna work you know so that's what I was ranting about I mean it would work but it wasn't going to work it, it, you weren't going to get the results they were getting. Let's put it that way. You could if you knew a lot of little subtle things, but they don't tell you that part. All right. So I'm trying to keep my board and my cover or cord, my board and my cord edge. That's what I'm, why I'm leaving that pattern piece there. So. <laughs> you sewed a double zipper pocket recently. Oh my goodness. So you did a dub, like the double welt with the zipper behind it. And my hat is off to you, lady. <laughs> I feel like that that's probably, well, honestly, like if you, if you do, um, that actually would, cause you get to top stitch around the perimeter. So that's kind of nice. I'm gonna do a bonus about zippers and things. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. This is my other edge here. Okay. 
probably looks like a mess on my table, I know, but I'm just leaving those pieces there so I don't get lost in the sauce, you know? All right, let's move all this right there. So we have this, let's make, I wanna make sure I don't twist anything. The bottom. There we go, okay. Yeah, I wanna see. Oh, that's good. I didn't know she had one. And see, I, I could have really poked around and looked pretty deeply, but at the same time, um, I wanted to just see what the initial search would look like, you know? <laughs> right, Shem, exactly. All right, I'm gonna overlock these seams real quick. Just gonna overlock all these little short seams. I gotta get an arm out of the way. Me, I have a rogue arm sitting here, which fell out of the bin. And I think that there's like, like the the easy way to do a well is so great in so many applications, and I think it looks really nice. And it's nice that, you know, like sometimes when there's an easy method to do something, it's kind of like obvious that it was the easy method and you feel a little bit like, oh, people are going to judge me or something. I will never judge you, um, you know, <laughs> because you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> You're sewing. <laughs> but with that well, like... It is a legit welt pocket as far as like what you would, it's like actually the one you want to pick to use in a lot of cases. You know, like that is actually the best looking welt for the, the project. Did you miss? Nope, Nancy, but you can drink anyway if you want. Yeah, you know, Michelle, it's funny because on one person who I know is a, a, like big in the home sewing world, um, they top stitched theirs down. And I was like, ooh, that's kind of spicy. <laughs> like, sign me up. I'll do that. All right, I'm going to, I'm not going to put my Velcro on yet. We're going to put this to the cover now. The Velcro goes to the cord edge. All right, this is where, okay, I'm not going to put my wool felt sewn into there. Yeah, you know what I like about the so-called easy welt as well is that because you can top stitch down the ends, it feels a little bit more appropriate for a pocket that's gonna get a lot of use because you might stress that opening with the hand or wallet or phone going into it often. I think that that is a really good way to have a nice sturdy version, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna put my old batting on here. I'm just gonna line it up. Should have done this on the table over there, huh? Yeah, the one thing I discovered yesterday, I kind of was like, there's no way this is gonna work every time. And I decided to like put it to the test and, and, and I was trying to figure out like, okay, wait, why is this working? There's this, I don't feel like this should work. <laughs> like, I feel like it should work sometimes, but I was, I was just skeptical myself, right? So, um, the one I'm gonna make for the video, I'm gonna make a gigantic one so you can see everything. Cause don't you hate it when you can't see where they're putting the needle? Especially with something like that, something that's kind of a high stress item. So my cover is a little bigger than this and it's because remember I added a little seam allowance and plus 
it's just a little bigger. It's like a lot bigger. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna go to the pattern table really quick because this is gonna drive me crazy. you don't immortalize anything in here. I might trim a little bit of this off too. I promise I'm a, well, I'm not gonna promise I'm a clean person. I have two dogs in my house. <laughs> But my clothes are clean. I don't know why my ironing board cover looks so gross, you know? This little wrinkle right here is a little bit of a problem. All right, so I'm just gonna trim a tiny bit off. It's more than a tiny bit, isn't it? Sorry, I can't see chat, but I'll be able to see it in just a second. Okay. Oh yeah, the double welt with the flap, very nice. Yeah, and then, you know, you can put your flap above the welt pocket, outside of it. You can put it in the seam. And I think you see that less and less with the flap coming out the top of the welt. They're all so situational. It, it, that's why this is, it get, kept getting bigger and bigger, the, this pocket skill building session. I was like, oh, but this is kind of, this is kind of essential. And I was like, you know, no, 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 we're gonna keep this we're gonna keep this, you know, with the the like tools that you need in order to do all that. All right, so let's find our nose. Here's the nose. Oh no, I unthreaded my needle. <laughs> Wah. Okay, so I'm gonna line up my notch to the notch there. And I'm just gonna get kind of an idea of how is this gonna go right now. You know, since I didn't really make real pattern pieces and I didn't walk the seams and make sure that everything's gonna fit. We're just gonna take a gander. It's looking pretty good actually. So here's the crux of it right here. When I get down here, where's the center? So I'm only about a half inch off. So I'll take that, that's fine. I think what I'll do is sew from the nose to the bottom on either side. <laughs> well, I was on the other side and the computer is facing my sewing machine, so. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna single needle this on, meaning straight stitch it on, and then I'll use my serger just to make it nice and flat. I don't really think you need to overlock this. If you don't have a serger, I don't think you really need to because uh, uh, it's going to be inside the board or maybe you just don't you know, really wanna get the serger out. Don't. I'm gonna do it so that it's nice and flat since I am gonna add those two extra layers of the wool felt that I'm hoping will just lay on top of my ironing board. Okay. There's like a, a bump right here. And it's just the batting is, uh, it's fluffier, like right here. This width, because this is where it got mashed on my ironing board. <laughs> All right, Danny, thanks for coming. <laughs> you have to get one of your tiny humans. 
So you guys, my day, I was kind of hoping Terry was gonna be here because I think she'd appreciate all this. I don't know why, but I feel like Terry thinks this stuff is funny. This is how my day started. And by the time I left for work, my husband was like, I really hope you have a good day. <laughs> because, so the other day I filled the, the hummingbird feeder. I always make sure that the whole thing's put together. Um, I had cleaned it really good this time too. I always thought I cleaned it really good, but this time I was like, I'm gonna take apart all these little pieces, you know? So I did that and I hung it up. And then like one second later, the whole bottom of it fell off and this huge amount of sugar waters went whoosh, thankfully into the bushes. And I was like, wow, okay, well, I don't really wanna use up all of the rest of our sugar to uh, fill this against while wait. My husband got more sugar, just a little pack for the feeder so that they're happy because, you know, hummingbirds are the, um, they're like the mafia of the bird world. You know, you don't really want to make them mad. So, so there, he had gotten another new feeder because the other one had died as well. And so they weren't liking that one because there's not a, a perch for them to land on. So then when the other one was empty, I swapped it out. So the, this is like a long involved story. I'm really sorry. But um, so the short version, one of them ran out. That's the one that did the whoosh thing. And so I put the one, they, the brand new one they weren't liking very much in its place. And then they swarmed it. They were like, oh, okay, this is great. And we we're like, okay, great. So then today I was like, all right, I'm gonna, now I have this little bit of sugar water I'm, or sugar, I'm gonna fill up the one that went whoosh and, and put it back up. So I made sure the bottom was on really good. I made sure the top was screwed on for the hook. I even double checked both. I hung it up and then the top popped off and the whole thing fell down. There's Terry. <laughs> yeah, I knew Terry would be here if I started talking about all the bad things that happened to me today. <laughs> It's not Neosporin on toothbrush this time at least. So then um, I was like, wow, okay. I'm still in my pajamas. I haven't had coffee. I was out here in my socks because I couldn't find my slippers. I just picked it all up, got it out of this prickly part of the bush. And then I just tossed it in the bushes, set it aside. So then I'm upstairs in the bedroom. Look at this is fitting perfect now, great. My th cat is throwing up under the bed. <laughs> so then um, I'm like, great, uh, that's lovely. I clean all that up. I finish getting ready. I walk into the bedroom. Loki is completely his whole body inside the litter box. I was like, wow, I've had it. This is all before 9.30 a.m. The pets at my house, you know, they're gonna do me in. So um, that's how my day started. So I was a little worried about today's uh, stream. <laughs> I feel like a lot could still happen. This is going together pretty nice, actually. Mm, press this. Okay. Let's uh, check out this over here. Yeah, this will yeah, be fine. The good news is that, th that quilting cotton's kind of stretchy. You know, like when you're doing like a long, narrow piece like this, you know, you, there's a lot of give in there. It's also why you don't want to stretch it just in case you're, if you're worried that it might not fit, so. Yeah, me too, Nancy. There weren't any, like it was cleaned out. I clean it, you know, multiple times a day for that reason. And uh, the fact that uh, he was in there still, like his whole, he was, it's like one of those big corner ones with tall sides like this. He was committed. He was rooting around in there. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm not getting any like wrinkles or bubbles here. Cause that would kind of be a bummer on your ironing board, right? So make sure you're not getting any of those like this right here. Let's move that, make sure it's actually gonna get caught. I should be paying more attention to that. It's only cause of that batting underneath there, which
somewhat has a mind of its own because it's already been on the ironing board for a really long time. And so it's already a little bit kind of um, warped, you know, shaped to the ironing board. Okay. Yeah, and then I had also replanted these little succulents like I'm starting them because there's that's a whole nother saga and um, oh Ray thank you <laughs> I didn't get an alert it's there though there we go um, and uh, the squirrels have already uprooted them all So the squirrels have been kind of a menace lately. Has it, didn't he? Wait, who said it was, that sounds like your day? <laughs> Yours sounds like your morning too, Terry. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, right, Michelle, exactly. Your husband filled your Berkey with five gallons of water and her five-year-old accidentally pulled the entire thing off the counter. Oh my gosh. Five gallons of water? Um, okay, that's a lot because when, anytime you knock over like a half a glass of water, it feels like you've knocked over a gallon, right? Like you never realize how, t how much two tablespoons of liquid is until it's going all over your, like your report. So the sheet moon, <laughs> is that what it's called? It's a full moon. Maybe that's what it is. I felt a little out of sorts today. <laughs> Ray loves the, the involved story. <laughs> All right, let's overlock this edge. Let's, let's see how it looks, too. Let's make sure. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's ugly, but yeah. Okay. You just missed your sign with the face. Oh, my gosh. That, uh, that is so much, that's like a flood. That's basically a flood. All right, so we're just gonna overlock this. I adjusted a few things in my surgery and I'm not happy. <laughs> like it's doing a nice stitch and all that, but um, it's, uh, I don't know. You know what it is? It only has one needle in it. I, I like the way it looks with two. It, this looks really nice though. I don't know what's my problem. truck around this whole thing. Like I said, I don't really think this is completely necessary if you don't want to overlock it. I don't think you have to worry about it, you know, unraveling or anything. Unless you're going to wash it a lot. Like I think Nancy brings up a good point if you use a lot of starch or stuff. Um, if you are going to wash it, you probably do want to do something. Otherwise, every time you wash it, it might be a thready mess. Look at this nice straight seam right there. I can tell right where I look at chat. I looked at chat right there. I looked at chat right there. <laughs> And it looks like I did a lap around the block too. Okay. Um, I do have something living in my wall right now. 
I do. And it comes out every evening when I'm sitting there upstairs, like just relaxing, watching TV, playing a game or something. And it's walking around in there and it drives my dogs crazy. <sighs> I thought you said you wash it a lot though, Nancy. Maybe you just haven't used as much starch lately. All right, I just secured that tail and I'm just looking at these little wibbly wobbly. Oh, man, my machine just got like pushed away because it's uh, like, you can't tell, but right here, there really is this little hump of uh, batting the thickness there. And because this edge is probably like when it's around the ironing board right here, this is kind of getting pulled under and it wasn't getting as um, pressed all the time. Yeah, are your dogs going crazy too? I don't know what's in the wall, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, like I, I kind of forgotten about it. I forget about it during the day, and then every night I'm like, oh my god, that's right, there's something in the wall. Um, we've had problems with, like, flickers getting into our attic and then going down the chimney to the first floor. It's not a big house. It's only a two-bedroom house. <laughs> but the attic is really big, and it's really peaked, so... Um, where's my, oh, here it is. All right. So we have this now. So we're going to tack on our Velcro first. And... Roughly, do we know where that, I did notch these, right? Oh yeah, there's one right there. So let's see, if this is how it is, you need to make sure you put your Velcro on so that it's actually gonna work. <laughs> right, Nancy. You have squirrels in the attic? Oh my God. Okay. That was right here. Here's one right here. And so if this is how it's going, right? You want it to be like this. This is how you want it to go. Okay, so we're gonna put you here. So to be clear, I'm putting the wrong side of the Velcro to the right side of the fabric here. Just in case you're Wanting to make sure. And I'm just going to tack it in those notches. And then we're going to put it on this side too. And then this side, the loop, is going right side to right side. So it's right sides together. And then let's do the same thing. find our other one. Um, I don't see it. Is it down here? Oh, there, there it is right there. Okay. You can't, you, you definitely can't just put these wherever you want. You need to make sure it's not going to um, not interfere with your board, but you're going to be able to actually access it to change it. Cause I've, I have made that mistake before where I was like, ah, this looks like a better place. You know, you think, you know, better. So. Okay. So now we're to the cord part. So this right here is, oh, look at that. It's actually failing. Oh, look at that. I don't even, I shouldn't even put this in. Look. You hear that? It's just breaking. Look. Well, shoot. Let's see if I have any bungee. I think I do. 
let's see here. Do I have that much? Well, we could do elastic. Hmm. I'll show you what I got. Do I have quarter inch elastic? Here it is. Okay. Yeah, it's super old. It's actually just breaking. Can you hear it? You're not getting something to touch him. All right, well. This is all I have. Um, and they're all samples. I don't think I have enough. Maybe I could piece these two together. They're about the same diameter. See what big of how big of a piece we need. I can still use this binding. But I still need to remove the thread on. Are you saying we're distracting? Wow, you're distracting me. Um, can I piece them together? I, yeah, I, I mean, here's the thing. I can't really sew these together. Have you guys ever sewn on this stuff? It's, it's actually kind of hard to sew on. These two pieces will go together, but I've tried to do this a few times before and I don't really have a whole lot of luck sewing these together. Maybe hand sewing them together, but uh, you know, a home, I don't know, I'm sure a home sewing machine would go through this. It's a little tricky. I don't actually think I need this and so I'll probably just leave it out and maybe I'll just bind it um, with fresh binding that's pulled taut because I don't really need to cinch it. Let's put it on the ironing board and see what we think. How about that? Did I throw away the, let's throw away the old stuff though. So let's do a workaround. I can save the cord lock. I never use these things as they're kind of a pain in the butt, but. It sounded like plastic. <laughs> right, I know. It's the whole point, right? All right, let's, um, I didn't check my. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't think I could fit the knot inside the binding. Tell me if you can hear me. Tell me if you can hear me so I know that's working. All right. 
Can you guys hear me? Oh yeah, you can hear me, okay. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna take, so this cover here, So this cover here uses a Velcro system as well, but it's like a, a buckle. Um, and uh, I don't find that to be as necessary, but it, it can help. Like you could put a piece of elastic on one end rather than Velcro and then just um, the Velcro hook loop sewn together and then loop through. And then the elastic right here would give you a little bit of give. Let's see. This isn't the ironing ironing board it's gonna go on, but it, I did check to see if it was the same size. So I'm kind of curious what I can get away with as far as binding or not. Yeah, I think binding will be a good so we'll pull it tight as we apply it to cinch in that bottom edge. All right, cool. So let's pick out a binding here. Maybe one I don't have to change my thread for. Like this one. Maybe I should use one of the ones I'm selling, huh? <laughs> oh, I haven't used this blue. This is cute. Um, or that one, or that one. I'll let you guys pick. Pick these here. Yeah, let's look at these. Hey, Barbara. Oh, you have a planned power outage today? Oh, it's line maintenance, okay. Oh, really, does it really, Michelle? That's funny. All right, so I have um, this one which picks up the, oh, <laughs> let me show you. I have this one that picks up the green. It's a little overexposed. This is like a greenish yellow right here. It's about the same color. I have this blue. When do you come uh, home, Libby? I'll just go zoom you guys in a little bit. I have this one that's like a little flower. And I have this multicolored one. Kind of hard to tell, huh? I'm kind of leaning towards this one. It's kind of hard to see. I'll pull one um, up at a time. This fabric doesn't, how come my fabric never shows good on camera? The 24th, nice. Okay. Uh, there's this blue one. I think this is my vote. And then this one. You guys have any input? You like the blue, Nancy? All right. I like the blue too, actually. It's pretty good. The 
that you like the multicolor one? <laughs> this one here? No? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you like the two that were in the middle? So the two, uh, that was this one and the blue one, right? These two, Barbara? You love that this one here, it doesn't look floral. Third one. Is this the third one? That is, right? Team blue for Michelle. All right, I think, uh, I know, I kind of like the blue. I just don't like how white it is. But, you know, narrow piece. I like the way it picks up the, the lighter blue. But I'm always a fan of this lime green color. I think I'm gonna go for that. Let's just do it. I feel, I feel like I'll have more uses for the blue on things, so maybe I'll save it. You know? You have another, another one for blue. All right, sorry guys. Okay, so. So this is my plan. I'm going to pull it as I go, as I, as I sew it on. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that it kind of draws it in kind of like elastic. I'm really sorry that today is lawn maintenance today. All right, hey Bernadette, how's it going? All right, so, um, I just like tethered these, but now I'm like, oh, okay. We're gonna do this on the wrong side. I'm not missing anything else, right? This is the final step. This was really fast. <laughs> Thankfully, oh, I wound a bobbin, but it's not wound. I have white. I have to change my thread. <laughs> I, I think I made up my mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> team lime. All right, um, let me get spool. <clears throat> Yeah, I was all worried with all those weird pet things that happened today. I was like, oh gosh, what's the stowing gonna be like today? And then I went to thread my machine and I went through the thread cradle at the top the first time, two times in a row. And I was like, okay, this is promising. <laughs> Cause that right there, that's one of the hardest things for me to thread. Cause you have to go from the back to the front, for like toward you. You can't see back there. I can't see back there because it's uh, like the way it's positioned. All right, I need to fix whatever's going on here though. Look at, so if your bobbin ever is like this, you see how I can stick my thumbnail in there like this? That's not good, don't use it. Don't use it and then post in the guild why your machine isn't sewing well and you didn't want to you didn't want to waste all this thread because you have to get rid of it. You have to rewind the bobbin. But look at that, and that's kind of satisfying, huh? I don't know why it didn't thread correctly, but it because it, it feels like it's in the tension disc 
uh, but it must not be all the way in the tension disc and that's why. So you, you have to make sure your bobbin is threaded correctly or not threaded correctly, wound with the appropriate amount of tension. It's really important. It should be pretty firm. And I don't know why this is a, this is in the tension disc, I'm not sure. I'm gonna rewind this. I have a feeling I won't have enough thread otherwise. My, mine I can actually change the tension on too. Yeah, me too. I, I hate it when that happens. Especially because um, on my machine, I don't know what's doing it. You know, and if, if I was sitting here winding a bobbin, I would kind of be like, wait a minute. And sometimes I check, I stop and check. This one I, I can't because I'm usually sewing, you know. All right, so I'm gonna sew this right side to wrong side. And I'm gonna pull on this binding as I sew. I put a bobbin in there, right? Oh yeah, I mean, you could, you could use it for hand sewing. Um, I just needed that bobbin. I mean, I, I guess I could have saved it, but I have so much thread, I'm not too worried about it. All right. So the, the binding is gonna act like, like a gentle elastic. Now, if you are finding that you use that draw cord a lot and you don't wanna use that bungee, you can just use a regular draw cord. It doesn't have to be elastic. You can just get like a nylon or cotton draw cord or something. I, I don't have any <laughs> draw cord here. The only one I have is really chunky and it's for um, a, like sweatshirt hoodies, you know? So it has like a, a, a knit cover over it. And even if I take the knit cover over, off of it, it's uh, pretty chunky. So now I'm doing that pleat right now and I'm just kind of unfolding the pleat as I sew it on. Now, if you really need it to be cinched a lot, you can sew elastic to this edge. You could even zigzag it on, like stretch it and zigzag it onto the edge. You could overlock it, but uh, I think you're gonna find overlocking elastic that's really narrow. It's really hard unless you're using like a, a special foot. I, I don't do it. I just, uh, I feel like it's just fraught with just way too many issues. But you could overlock this edge and then just straight stitch the elastic on or zigzag it stretching it first, so. So my mulch mats are doing so good, <laughs> but I mowed one the other day. I could swear I was nowhere near it. Well, okay, I won't say nowhere near it. I knew I was close to it, but I was like next to it. And something about it, Okay, now that bobbin's fine. Good, because I have a feeling I'll run out on this. So basically, um, the mulch mat fought the lawnmower and the lawnmower won for sure. There's nothing like seeing your fabric scraps from your sewing room just suddenly just kind of explode out everywhere. <laughs> so. It was uh, kind of a mess. But the good news is, it was the square one, I, the last one I did out of the photo print fabric. And because I did it in each section, remember how I sewed like pillows and attached each pillow to, to, to the next one? It was like two pillows that just ripped off and the rest of the mulch mat was fine. I just kind of angled it and put it back together. But uh, they just... Uh, just, those two didn't survive. And then I just threw it all in the compost bin. <laughs> all right, so I'm still just stretching this binding. I'll give you some tips on binding when I go to the next step, but a lot of binding when it's on the edge like this, when it's straddling the, 
inside and outer edge. I do stretch it a little bit. I don't stretch it this much. I'm pretty, I'm pulling pretty hard on this. I'll usually just gently pull it. Granted, the between the difference between the gentle pull and the harder pull isn't that much. <laughs> like it is still woven, you know. But you can see how it's lifting up right here. See that? It just is like pulling it. That's a curved edge though. But even over here. Am I still really zoomed in? Aren't you guys not going to tell me? You guys don't even pay attention. It kind of looked pretty. It kind of felt, felt like my dirty laundry was out there. <laughs> you know? All right, we're almost to the beginning. I know we were gonna do all kinds of little things for the sewing room uh, this year, and I'm sorry we didn't really do that. I'm having to prioritize what I stream because I'm streaming a little less. Okay, so now we're gonna pull this to the right side. Now I can kind of fasten my Velcro so it doesn't bug me, I think, yeah. So when I have this little overlap, all I do, like when I first started, I folded back this tail. And then when I got to the uh, beginning right here, I just laid this raw edge right on top. And so then when it turns, you have this nice little folded edge is what's showing. I don't ever seam the binding together. It's really rare I would do that. Um, and then when I go to kind of connect all this, I usually start behind this little join I kind of get going and then I will, when I get to that little folded section, then I kind of straighten it out. And it is a little bit fussy right now because it's all stretched. So, and it's a kind of a thin edge to bind because it's only one layer. There's my, I didn't sew first before, after I changed my thread color. So it's kind of a mess there. We'll just include it in there. And we don't really care what the binding looks like on the other side because it's just the inside of an ironing board cover, you know? So I would just fold it past your seam. I think I just ran out of thread. Fold it past your seam and then edge stitch it down. Like that. Night, Aisha. Are you leaving? Wait, who said that? Night, Malin. Oh, both of you, your names. I'm trying, I'm trying. You're concentrating. <laughs> I'm supposed to be concentrating. You're supposed to be, you know, heckling me or asking questions, challenging me. Tomorrow I'll be sewing the Sophie dress by five out of four patterns. It's one of their very few woven patterns because most of their patterns are for knits. I tend to be more of a woven sewer. I like them a lot, I like wearing them a lot. Uh, so I'm obviously gravitating towards those in their library. I'm gonna do a, there's a lot of variations. You can do so much with this pattern. It can be a top or a dress. I'm doing a dress. It's going to be kind of like a, uh, kind of like the Azores in some ways. It's like a different, different, it doesn't look like it, but at the same time it has some elements. So it has a, a placket at an angle right here that you sew in. Um, it has I'm making mine um, kind of sleeveless with a little sleeve ruffle. An armhole ruffle, it's not a real sleeve. It's got a blousing bodice and it's gonna have a, a casing in the waist. <laughs> Shem's busy. Man, you're multitasking, Shem. And then, um, 
It also, mine's gonna also have a hem ruffle as well. I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm doing it in a linen with a floral print that uh, was kind of special when I bought it. I was, I, uh, you know, I'm hoping this is the project for it. So it's got a lot of the same attributes. It's got that blousing waist. It doesn't have gathers, but it has the ruffle factor. Oh yeah, the Savannah. Is that's the one on sale this month, right, Carrie? Are you think they're coming out with more woven? Really? I haven't seen any lately. What? Wait, what was woven that came out recently? Maybe I'm just like forgetting. Uh, but there is a lot of variations in this. There's a lot of different sleeve options. You can do like a, um, a circle, they call it a circle sleeve, which is like a flutter sleeve. You can do a binding sleeveless bodice, top, uh, maxi length, with or without a ruffle. Um, what else? This is an excellent project to practice your binding on, by the way, because nobody's gonna see it. Unless you're selling ironing board covers. If you're selling ironing board covers and you have to bind this edge, um, let's talk about your binding attachment that you're gonna buy. <laughs> you could even put a little piece of uh, elastic in there. So I could put, I, that was another option I was gonna say, is I did get my quarter inch elastic out, it's somewhere here, and uh, I could have inserted that into the binding here, you know, into this little, like a casing. I'm sort of hoping that this is enough. If it's not, like if I'm feeling like it's kind of winging out in a couple places, I can open it up at that back stitch section and put in some elastic in this casing. You could even consider just putting elastic maybe around the squared off end of your ironing board and the sides and just leaving the nose alone. Because the nose in general doesn't really need it. It's usually because it's got more fitting to it. All right, we're almost done though. Except for my ranting and getting off topic, this was pretty quick. Let's see. Why isn't that, why is that laying funny? Oh yeah, here we are at the beginning already. That is, I thought that was a thread and it's the um, print. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> the way whack Kylie. Do you just get one in the mail? Like, I never get one. This is a huge improvement, isn't it? See right here, I think like I could use some cinching. But maybe just, maybe what I could do is, ooh, what if I just put a piece of elastic from here to here? Kind of like a little cheater thing. So let's say we did this. We could attach the, this is kind of cheesy to do this, but why not? Let's try it. There would be a more formal way <laughs> to do something like this. We're just gonna attach the elastic. I'm gonna sew it twice there like that. And then, hmm. Let's make it, look at how stretchy that is. All right, yeah, we'll make that pretty cinched in. Maybe I have to sew it like this. Hmm. 
a little awkward. Where's this one at? Down lower, right there. Yeah, that's kind of cheaty, but hey. Gives me a little bit of flexibility and stretch right there. Get rid of some of these threads, we'll make it look less cheesy. Just mail it. You know what? I probably um, didn't sign up. Hey, yeah, we're here still here, Sydney. I got one once and it was close to the holidays. And I remember thinking, wait a minute, a lot of this stuff isn't in stock on the website. <laughs> All right, let's um, try it on. I'll just, that's going on my home board. So this is gonna be my home board. So we'll just put it on there. I really like the improvement of it being ice cream. I have to get past, there's like a iron cradle. Yeah, that actually, the elastic thing, that worked really good. It's gonna work. There we go. Yeah. Not bad, huh? Show you the other side. Here's the nose. This is this edge. A little shy right through here. Like it's actually coming up onto the board right through here. So if that ends up being a problem, I could put a piece of elastic right here, move one of these. And then the elastics are down here. And then I'll show you the, the squared off end with the stretch piece that I added. Let's see, it's right here. And it's actually stretched to the max, but it's laying really nice right there. Yay, I like the ice cream. I think my ironing board is probably a little bit narrower right here at this elb, is this like bump? There we go. <laughs> the price is maybe different. Yay. <laughs> I only got one. I really liked it though. I enjoyed it too. It was kind of fun. I know a lot of you've ordered the thread chart too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Carrie, I have one at home, not here. This one sits in the, like behind the patterns over there. And that's because I have it here for, say I need to iron the, a whole lot of fabric because my wool felt pad is pretty small for doing something like that. And I have had a tabletop one, but I gave that to my daughter when she moved away. And that's the one I put a really funky ironing board cover on, so I bought her an ironing board cover because we were in a hurry. It was pained me to do that. The ones that hang from the wall, my problem with those is that I feel like I can't push very hard. Yeah. Yours is a kind of plastic. See, mine is metal. <laughs> ice cream right from that ironing board cover. I know, the ice cream is a, that's gonna be fun. The one I have here, 
I've been using this fabric for ironing board covers for a while, but look, it's pattern pieces. Isn't it cute? <laughs> I love it. This one has, let's see, what is that in there? Is it just a draw cord? I feel a cord in here, but I don't see the end. Yeah, I don't see the end. I'm not sure why the cord is in there at all. It's not stretchy. There's got to be a cord in here somewhere. I mean, a cord lock, an opening, right? I don't even remember making this. <laughs> all right, so let me show you what the Sophie looks like. Do I have a keyboard here? Sophie's swing dress. Oh, no, that's peekaboo patterns. Let's see. I don't think my, me, my microphone's hooked up here. Let me check. Okay. All right, so this has a lot of views. So the one I'm making is like this. So it has the hem ruffle. That's a draw cord right there. Um, and then this has these little sleeve ruffles here and then a placket that's open all the time. Let's see if we can get a good view of this placket. This one's kind of big on her, let's see. This is the view I'm making right here. You can see that ruffle looks really good right there and there's the draw cord. And then, um, does this placket show well? Eh. I think you get the idea though. Here we go. Has a little collar, but it's not, I, I don't think it's actually a collar because it looks like it lays flat. It's more like a neck facing. So that is what I'll be doing tomorrow, starting tomorrow. Hey, Mafia, how's it going? Night, Libby, sleep well. <laughs> yeah, heat retention, that's cool. That's why I added the, um, I'm gonna add those wool pieces to mine. So yeah. So yeah, we're making that tomorrow. The fabric I have is really pretty too. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and sew the whole thing on Saturday. Maybe what I'll do is I'll cut it tomorrow and start sewing tomorrow. So I'll do cutting and sewing part one tomorrow and then um, finish the sewing on Saturday. So we'll kind of get it going so that I know kind of where I'm at since I didn't give too much time for it. So the Bondi dress this weekend, which one's that? Is it Bondi? Like Bondi Beach <laughs> or no, is that, wait. I'm just kind of blanking on, on how do you say that? Oh, well. Yeah, I was planning on wearing my Azers dress today, but it actually got cold again. So maybe I'll wear it Saturday or tomorrow. I still need to take pictures of it. All right, so thank you for coming, you guys. Nice to see you all. Um, I know this wasn't the most exciting project, but I'm excited about it. Thanks, Ray, for the donation. I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate that you appreciate my long stories and rants. <laughs> And then, um, Mafio, did you, I'm sorry, did I answer you? The, um, the one on my ironing board is a quilting cotton, if that's what you mean. Oh, by Tasudi. Tasudi. It's 
Let's check it out. Oh. Oh, well, that's cute. Yeah, I'll, leave, I'll put a link in chat for you guys. That's really, what kind of fabric did you use? Did you leave the, the hem raw like that? That's really cute. Why, that one does not fit that model very well though. It's so tight across her back. Oh, you guys, now that I review patterns, I look at everything and then things just come out my mouth. I'm really glad you didn't see me look at this pattern the other day. I was like, I almost commented, but that doesn't fit. <laughs> I almost commented on that. It's so bad. <laughs> You're gonna make one too, Allison? Nice. <laughs> Sydney. Linen, yeah, that's nice. I like that. That's very cute. How did you like sewing the Tasuti pattern? I've never made any of their patterns. How was that? Kind of curious. Um, yeah, the pattern I saw, I can't remember whose it was, thank goodness, but they were saying, oh, we just got print, printed versions of the pattern back in, and there was a beautiful photo on the cover of it of a model wearing the garment, and it didn't fit the model at all. Like. Like it looked, it looked kind of bad. And I just thought, well, okay. And it, it, what happened was it was so tight right here at the apex, there were wrinkles going away from it in all directions. And she wasn't very busty. So I just thought, well, that won't work for me. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> did you write? That's funny. You're getting snow in Utah, what? We're kind of in a drought. It was fine, okay. Easy so first time with CD. Yeah, it looks pretty straightforward. I love that style, that kind of A line. It's kind of got like a 60s vibe. Oh, there's more pictures. And they all have the raw hem. I don't, I don't like um, when you can't click on all the images that you have to scroll. I just wish all the images were there you can pick and choose which ones you click on. I don't wanna scroll through every single one of them to get to see all of them, you know? This kind of has a pharaoh dress vibe, am I right? Kind of that A-line trapeze style. Very cute. I would have loved that. I still do. I feel like now I might look pregnant except for my age in it. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for coming, I appreciate it. It's nice seeing you guys, it's been too long. And then, um, oh, you, you finished your hem. Well, that works. The print one is like that. Huh, the longer version's kind of cute too. All right, I'm gonna go. Tasudi's fabric is expensive. Um, oh yeah. Why is that? Are they making it? What the heck, $89 per meter? These aren't all digitally printed, are they? Because I'm not a big fan of the digital prints sometimes. What is that? Terry's got the good taste. Dang, some nice stuff on here. Nice photos, really nice photos of the fabric. Look at that Liberty Lawn, oh man. That Thorpe one, mm, love that stuff. All right, thanks for a lot for telling me to look at fabrics, bye. <laughs> All right, oh yeah, Amy started a new job. Yeah, I hope your job went good. All right, I'm gonna head out. Um, <laughs> All right, see you guys. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, same time, same place, and we'll be making the Sophie Toppin dress. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.